Raven probably found some fried land and found a Mrs. Raven and, and, and uh, forgot all about Noah. But then Noah said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to send a dove out. Now, a dove is a type of what? The Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to send a dove out. And the dove went and found an olive branch in its mouth, came back to let Noah know that the water had rescinded. It's okay to get off the ark. But here's the thing about, why did God say in, in 1 King, I have commanded the ravens, unreliable, undependable, unclean, to feed you? Because I'm telling you, in these last days, when there is going to be a drought for the word of God, God is going to start using people that you never thought on, that man. God would use. He's going to use the former drug addicts, the prostitutes, the, the dope dealers, the, the, the no good, scum of the earth people would call them. God is going to start using them to bring a word to feed you. Guess what? He's already started with some of us. Listen. But if, if Noah, I mean, excuse me, no, excuse me. If, if he did not go to the place, if Elijah did not go to the place, God told the prophet to go to a particular brook, to go to a particular place, and all of his needs will be met supernaturally in that place in the time of famine. Yes, sir. He said, I will meet all of your needs in time of famine if you go to the place I tell you to go. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor, where does church come in that? God has a ministry, God has a church for every last one of us Amen. that he plants us into and that's where your provision is and that's where your needs are going to be met if you're in the right place. Amen. I tell people all the time, I used, I used to have a brother come here, uh, no, I take that back. There was a brother who used to send his tithes to the church, but he, he went to another church. I stopped that because it, it's not about the money. Amen. It's about him being in, in the right uh, accordance with the will of God. Right. Amen. So I told him, I said, no, I want you to stop sending your tithes here. I want you to send them and plant them where you're being fed at the church that you go to. Amen. He said, well, I'm enjoying it over here. I said, well, because he was getting the CDs and getting the messages. He said, so I wanted to sow where I'm being fed. I said, no, that's not right. If you're physically over there, that's when you need to put your tithes. And he said, well, man, I wasn't expecting this. He said, yeah, you're a, pre a preacher turning down money. <laughs> That's just like a preacher turning down fried chicken. You know? <laughs> he said, a preacher turning down money? I said, listen, if the money is not according to the will of God, it won't produce Amen. what it's supposed to produce. I said, go plant that where you're going to church. Amen. Eventually, he started coming here. And, and I wasn't trying to prosper, I wasn't trying to steal nobody. But listen, God has a place for every last one of us where our needs are going to be met on a consistent basis. And God chose Elijah to go to this brook. And he said, I will feed you. The, the ravens brought him breakfast. They brought him dinner every day for three years. All right. I wonder where they get that food. You know where I think they got it? I think they got it from, what, what was the king? Ahab. I think they got it from Ahab's statement. Okay. I think the ravens went and got it off his statement and took it to the man of God. Yes, and I'm here to tell you that if you're in the right place, God will make sure that your needs will be met every yes. single time. Yes. Supernaturally, God will make sure your needs will be met, but yes. you've got to be planted in the right place. Yes, yep. well, what if you don't like the place? Mm -hmm. They got nothing to do with nothing. Has nothing to do with the price of butter. If you don't like the place that God places you, because God places you there for a reason. No matter mama don't like it, daddy don't like it, sister, brother, hooking them, Ray Ray, they don't have to like where you go to church. Because in the place where you go, that's where the provision is for your life. So you gotta get connected to an anointed ministry that God places you in, and the anointing will begin to flow from your life. Because guess what? This is the danger right now. As our ministry grows, God is going to help us to grow larger but stay small at the same time. All right. Because you've got to have connection with your shepherd. Yeah. Amen. You have to. Come on. It is vitally important that you have connection with your shepherd. Yeah. See, right now, uh, I, I was talking to a, a minister the other day, a pastor the other day, 
and he, he has mentality, and there's books being written about it, and they're all out of order. It's not of God, and I'm tell, I told him, I said, that is not of God. He said, well, I don't see myself as a pastor, a shepherd anymore. I'm a rancher. And, and, and check this out. You go to those bookstores right now. There are books written on how to be a rancher in church instead of a shepherd. I understand what they mean, but the Bible didn't say he gave them his song, Ranchers. <laughs> it didn't say he gave some uh, uh, apostles and, and prophets and evangelists and ranchers and teachers. He said pastors and teachers. So this rancher is not in the will of God, and he tried to take issue with me. I said, well, listen. Let's not argue. We're brothers. I said, but let's let the word speak for itself. If you can show me in the word of God, when God called you to be a rancher, I'll, I will never say another word. I said, show me in the word. I said, show me where, where God always had shepherds and not ranchers. Because yeah, ranchers drive you to the slaughterhouse. That's all ranchers do. Ranchers fatten you up to take you to market. And these people sitting in churches today that have a rancher who they have never met their shepherd. Guess what's happened? They're being fatted up for the slaughter because they're not getting enough worry in them where they can stand against anything. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Amen. I said, man, what you teaching the people? I said, we have in this day, thank God for a the people. There's always a remnant. But we have the weakest most carnal, most fleshly believers that we have ever had before. Why? Because of this rancher mentality. I heard you in, I heard you out, but I don't want to know you. Come on now. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to have fellowship with you. I don't want to. It's, it's a sad thing when you never met your pastor. All right. Never met. I deal with people all the time that I'm talking to and I'm counseling with that don't even know me here. And I ask them a question, like, why don't you go to your own pastor? They said, well, I never met him. I said, how long have you been going to that church? I've been going there for four years. And I'm going, you don't have no shepherd, you got a ranch. Because a shepherd would look you straight in your eyes and say, you are deficient in something. You need this nutrient. A shepherd can look in your eyes and tell something is wrong. Yeah, right. People don't want that nowadays. Because if you are going to have a shepherd, that means you have to have accountability. Right. 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 People don't want accountability. Right. They want to go to a place where I can sneak in, sneak out. Yeah. Nobody even know I've been there. No, baby, that's not what God calls. God calls us to be under accountability yeah. so that when the shepherd looks at you, he says, baby, your walk is a little crooked. Let's straighten it up. Amen. People right. don't want that. No more. They don't want that. Right. They want to be coming in. I'm going to sit in the back. I'm going to hear a few songs. I'm going to hear a 15-minute message. And then I'm going to leave. And my lifestyle has not been affected whatsoever. People want that today. But I'm telling you, that is not where the anointing is. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Got to have a shepherd if you're going to walk in the anointing. Come on, guys. Come on with it. Say it. Pastor, do you have a shepherd? Yes, I do. And I want y'all to pray for Apostle Bob Miller. He's not, he's not feeling well right now, but I'll tell you, this man souls in the me of my wife's life. He speaks into our lives, and this is, that's my shepherd. Amen. Amen. Everybody Amen. needs somebody. Come on now. Amen. Everybody needs somebody that, that's elevated just a little bit higher than where they are. All right. Come on. Amen. That's right. So this, if you feel like you don't need a shepherd, mm -hmm. you can fat it up right. for some. The devil will eat your lunch. Amen. The devil will eat your lunch. You want to know what devil food is? I ain't talking about no devil eggs. I'm talking about devil food. It's people that are out of a covering, that is out of protection, that are out of, of under the, the ops, of, the, under the, the operation of an anointed shepherd. That's what the devil eats. Right. Amen. So this, you got to get connected to anointed ministry. And your needs, this is what you find. Once you are truly connected yes, to the anointed ministry and the anointed shepherds, you begin to find that God will start meeting your needs supernaturally. And you can't tell nobody how it happened. All you know is God did it. Yeah, yeah. God the, the, making ways and moving obstacles and blessing you. And all you can do is just praise God because you know that was a supernatural thing. But you'll find out the more connected you get, the more God begins to meet your needs supernaturally, just like he did Elijah. Amen. Mm -hmm. All I had to do was just lay there by the brook. 
And he knew, okay, back to my lunch is coming. He fly over and bring his lunch. My dinner's coming. And he drunk in the water. Guess what? He drunk so much when he drunk it dry. And let me tell you this. After he drunk it dry, God had already prepared, prepared another place for him. He said, he said, once you keep reading that in first case, he said, once you get done there, once the river is dry, I've already prepared a widow woman that's gonna take care of you. Yeah, yeah. You all know the story of the widow woman, she she had she had a little flour, a little oil, and she was gonna bake a cake for her and her son. And she said, We're gonna eat it and we're gonna die. It's the first king. We're gonna eat it, we're gonna die. Right. But the man of God, being a true man of God, he said, True, do what you say. Well, fix me one first. She said, wait a minute. When you get connected to a Lord in ministry, God will speak to you and God will show you avenues and ways where your blessing is, but it won't happen until you're in the right place. All right. Come on. And I have shared with people, I said, baby, maybe you're not in the right place. And I'm not talking about just uh, where they are. I told some people at TCI, I said, maybe this is not where God wants you to be. Because listen, it's not about us. I'm not in love with numbers. I'm in love with God's people. All right, all right. I said, and yeah. I called a friend of mine, another pastor, and I said, I have a, a couple here, and they want troublemakers. Check, I wasn't trying to get rid of them. Because you know, some pastors, they call other pastors, and they say, I got a couple for you I want you to take. <laughs> it wasn't like that. When I saw the ministry that God had placed on them, it wasn't fitting here. Right. And I knew it would fit them. And I called him, I said, listen, I want to send a couple to you, man, that what you guys are doing, they flow right in the middle of that, and I believe that's what God wants him to be. And he thanked me because it was on you. He said, you're sending me members? How do you know? We want everybody we can, but we don't want people here that God has not placed here. Because it's not going to help them. So I called him, and I said, and I sent these people over to him, and guess what? They're still flourishing today. Amen. They thank me every time they send me. Thank you for sending us to that place. What if I had them sitting here and God has not placed them here? Yeah. They would not grow. They would not produce. They would not prosper. But when you're in the right place and God places you, baby, you're going to grow. Yes. Amen. Amen. Flourish. Amen. You're going to flourish in the house of God. Yeah. They that are planted in the house of God shall do what? Flourish. Amen. Amen. All right. Now we spend too much time on that. Let's go to the next one. Now this one here is very important. Number one, you got to be connected to another situation. Number two, if you want to walk in the anointing, you got to be honest. You have honesty in your prayer life. You got to be honest when you pray. You know, some folks ain't honest when they pray. They think that God don't know. But God wants truthful. He wants truth in prayers, not religious prayers. God is not concerned how good you pray. God is not concerned how well you pray. God is not concerned how, how well you can articulate your prayers. God is not concerned about that. God wants to know when you pray, are you being truthful in your prayers? Amen. Listen to this. Amen. God is concerned with your heart. God wants to hear from the real you. The one that you live with, not the church of you. Did y'all know there's a church of you? Then there's a real you. Y'all want to get to know the real me. Don't ask me. That's the one that lives with me. The real you is the real you. The church of you is the face that we put on when we come to church. I mean, okay, there's, there's a church in us. Then there's a real us. That's the one God wants to hear from. He wants to hear from the real us. He wants to hear from the church in us. Listen, go to Psalm 145. Psalm 145, 18. Because there's a real us and there's a church in us. <laughs> you got that. God wants us to be honest in our prayer life. Psalm 145, verse, verse 18 says, The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in what? Truth. He is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. God showed me this principle. If you sow truth to God in your prayer life, the Holy Spirit can then lead you into all truth. All right. God, you got to be truthful to God when you pray. You are walking in order. Listen to this. God wants to hear the real truth. Don't you know there's a difference between the good looking truth and the ugly messy truth? 
I think there's a show I watch on CNN sometimes called The Messy Truth. And it talks about there's, there's a good looking truth, then there's a messy, ugly truth. But listen, if you sin, let me, let me just say this here. If you sin, tell God the ugly truth. Don't try to fix it up. Don't try to make excuses for it. Well, God, I kind of, I kind of committed fornication. I kind of, I kind of lied. Lord, I kind of show. How can you kind of? But see, some people try to fix up and make it look good. Well, Lord, if she hadn't been there, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> or if, if, if they hadn't said what they said to me, then I wouldn't have acted so ugly. That's the, that's the, that's the nice truth. But the ugly truth is say, God, I messed up. God, I blew it. God, help me. I, I messed up. I, just be honest with God. God, I blew it. I messed up. I have no excuse. So when you come to God like that and you repent for real, I'm talking for real repentance, God, forgive me. I messed up. I blew it. Guess what happens? God, when you do that, God will take the truth of your sin and give you the truth that will bring deliverance to your life. Amen. God will take the truth. Listen to me. He will take the truth of your sin and taking that truth, then God will give you deliverance how you can never, you will never have to walk in that again. Amen. There's a such thing called besetting sins. The Bible tells us lay aside the way, every way and the, the, the sin that so easily beset us. Those are sins that we just had not got the victory over and we, we feel bad when we do it. But listen, if you're truthful with God, God will give you a deliverance and speak deliverance to you where you won't have to live that way anymore. Amen. But you got to be truthful.